Hello there. My name is Mark Sholin, and I'm co-founder and president of Admiral Instruments. I appreciate you tuning into this video to learn more about how our team is making the next generation of electrochemistry instruments truly accessible worldwide. I have a lot to say on that topic, but the main scope of this video is to provide a brief overview about our software interface and explain a few of the ways we've designed our software to save you time and ultimately make your job easier. Before we dive into the software overview, I'd like to share some information about our SquidStat PotentiStat hardware. So here we have one of our SquidStat PotentiStats. It's our SquidStat Plus model. It's our best-selling instrument considering its EIS capabilities and 1 amp max current range for just $4,900. All of our different SquidStat models are connected to their experiments with this 90 centimeter long channel cable that features five electrode connections, a working counter, reference, working sense, and counter sense. All of these can be stacked as well to make it easier to connect to smaller samples. So if we look behind me here, you can actually see four of our different squid stat models that are configured and ready to run some experiments on a few different test objects that I've set up here, including an 18650 cell. And uh, in this small space that's uh, on my desk here, you actually have seven channels that are ready to go to run experiments. So you can pack in a lot of capability in a small space. Here's a summary spec sheet of the four different SwitchStat models you just saw on my desk. These are the specs that are most often asked for when people are shopping around for potential stats. You're welcome to visit our website, AdmiralInstruments.com, for the more detailed specifications. So to briefly describe these four different models, we'll start with our SquidStat plus PotentiaStat. It's our best-selling SquidStat. It's a $4,900 single channel instrument that can run any DC experiment up to one amp and a 10 volt scan range. And it features EIS up to one megahertz. Next up is our SquidStat ACE PotentiaStat, which is essentially a non-EIS version of the SquidStat Plus, and it has a reduced price uh, to correspond to that change. So it's $3,500 to run any DC experiment up to one amp at a 10 volt scan range. We then have our SquidStat Prime PotentiaStat. It is a $4,800 four channel instrument that can run any DC experiment up to 250 milliamps per channel at a 10 volt scan range. Lastly, we have our SquidStat Solo PotentiaStat. It's our entry level model priced at $1,900. And it's a single channel instrument that's designed to run any DC experiment up to 100 milliamps. I am also happy to report the pending launch of our boosted series of SquidStat PotentiaStats. This is a long awaited addition to our family of foundational SquidStat models. So these boosted SquidStats are three different models ranging from five amps going up to 20 amps as single channel instruments that are in a compact physical footprint that you can still hold in your hands. And with prices starting at just $8,900, all three of these models are standalone PotentiaStats that feature EIS up to one megahertz. My team and I are very proud of the fact that we have so far sold hundreds of squid stats to organizations across 26 different countries. It really is all about making our products truly accessible worldwide. So let's dive in to show you exactly what our software is capable of. So here it is, our squid stat user interface. And so to begin with, we have our run and experiment screen. So this is the main window that appears when you open our software and you can see on the left side of the screen all of the most commonly used electrochemistry experiments that one would expect any research grade potential stat to be able to carry out. 
Now, if there is ever a time when you don't see the particular sort of method that you want to run on the software here, or perhaps you simply want to chain together multiple experiments back to back, therefore saving time not having to tend to your potentiostat, we have our Build an Experiment screen, which allows users to create their own custom experiment by using the building blocks on the left-hand side of the screen here. It can be dragged and dropped into the sandbox such that you can configure basically any sort of customized experiment based on whatever parameters suit your needs. And it's simply a matter of following the arrows to know the order in which all of these different methods are being run. Um, to configure the specific parameters for any one of these is simply a matter of clicking on the tile to type in the specific conditions that you want for each individual experiment. You can also loop individual tiles or segmented tiles that are grouped together like these two here or you can even loop the entirety of the experiment here. So this is an excellent way to intuitively configure your own experiments because many other Potentistat software has this sort of capability but is very time consuming in order to fully understand how to operate. So we have made that process much easier. Once you have finished creating your custom experiment of choice, simply a matter of saving the experiment with an accompanying description, especially if you are sharing this Potentistat in a group lab environment, it's important to be able to clearly label what's going on with each one of these custom experiments that are created. So for example, we could just type in a name like so and uh, say this is my experiment description. And once you save your custom experiment, it becomes available in the run an experiment screen. So we see that this new experiment is now down at the bottom with the experiment description that I wrote and the experiment parameters are viewable by clicking edit experiment which takes you back to this window to check or edit the parameters to run. After you've decided what type of experiment you want to run and after you have determined which parameters that you want to run based on whatever you are running a measurement on. Now it's a matter of picking which SquidStat device or perhaps multiple devices you want to run this particular experiment on. So in this case we have linear sweep voltammetry with the parameters you see here and all of the different uh, four SquidStats that are plugged into my computer right now are available to run this linear sweep. So for example, we could pick one of our SquidStat ACE units to run it, or we could pick, uh, in addition to the ACE, having all four channels of the SquidStat Prime run it at the same time. Or maybe you want fewer channels to run it. The point is it's very easy to select one or more channels to run this exact same experiment, and their start times will be fully synchronized. For those of you that do typically run many different channels at the same time on a single computer, we have our multi-channel control tab, which has many of the same capabilities of the run and experiment screen, but with more flexibility and options that are optimized for running either the same or different experiments on many channels at once. So we see here again the four different SwitchStat units that are plugged into my computer right now with all the available channels on each one of those that can then um, run all the different experiments that are currently loaded onto each one of these. However, it's just a matter of clicking on the experiment that has been selected if you want to pick a different sort of experiment to run. And so once you've selected which experiments you'd like to run on your different channels can either have them all selected to run these various experiments at the same time, or you can mix and match which individual units 
you want to have run these channels at any given time. So once you've determined which channels you want to have run various experiments, you can start all the different channels by hitting the start button. Um, after you hit that start button, you are prompted to figure out, uh, to tell the software where you want your raw data to be saved. Once we do that, then in this case, three different channels are going to start up. So we have three different file save locations. And by the way, you can use our default file naming convention that we have established here, or you can name it whatever you like. It's totally up to you. So now these three channels have their file state locations selected and now they begin operating. So this is what our view data tab looks like. So uh, you can see all the real time values as they're being collected. In this case, this is just open circuit potential that's being measured. But we can see if we click to the different channels that we have here, like with our switch stat ACE unit that's running charge discharge experiments on the 18650 cell that is currently connected to it or the galvanostatic EIS that's being run on a Randall's circuit. Now all the different individual channels are shown in these uh, tabs that are very similar to what you see from a web browser. But we also have this view all graphs button that allows you to show many different channels with their data um, at the same time. Each one of these windows can be expanded in any different ways that you want. Uh, with the standard square configuration here, you could see up to eight channels running at the same time. And you can access all the same graph options uh, by right-clicking the screen to, for example, edit the line appearance um, and to do other sort of graphical manipulations The next menu is our manual control mode. So most Potentia stats require users to type in all the different voltage or current set points that they want to apply or measure before a channel starts. However, for cases when a user might not necessarily know what the limits of their sample are or simply want to have the ability to change set points in real time to do some quick characterizations again in the spirit of saving time we have our manual control mode so this is a cockpit sort of view of each one of the different uh, squid stats that are connected to the computer uh, so in the case of the squid stat plus that i'll work with to showcase this mode uh, you can see here that we have all the different sort of operating conditions and real-time values and graph options that are available to us. But the main difference is that we can start recording data on this channel and data points will just begin to be charted. And then we have the ability to either be in this open circuit mode or change to actually activating the channel itself at whatever applied potential which in this case we change that to one volt for example and just change it in real time and you can also toggle between being in potentiostatic mode or in galvanostat mode so here we go we can apply 10 milliamps um, which I guess uh, is outside the uh, voltage limit for this Randall cell that I have connected so we can go a bit lower than that and um, with this mode with the example like I just showed here where I don't necessarily know the limits of the sample that I'm testing uh, in terms of the specifications of the instrument you can use this as a time-saving measure to easily um, figure out what sort of voltage or current set points you should plan to configure into say a CB or perhaps doing uh, some impedance measurements. Now one of the biggest issues that many electrochemists face when 
operating their Potenci stats, particularly older brands of Potenci stat, is to very seamlessly be able to take their raw data that they collect from their instrument and get it in their hands so that they can analyze it and do whatever else needs to be done to it. But the point is getting the raw numbers is oftentimes a time consuming challenge. With our software, we make it very easy to access the file safe location that was picked when the experiment was first being configured. And now that we've opened up the file safe location, all of the data is stored natively in a CSV file format. So I'm opening this Excel sheet right now for this galvanostatic EIS that was run. I'll go ahead and close this prior linear sweep data here. So all of this, um, all these columns here are the raw data that was collected for this, um, for this Nyquist plot. Another key feature in terms of the way we save our raw data in the um, file save location before starting experiments is to have a recording of all the experiment settings and notes that were used to run this given experiment. Uh, so all the parameters that were typed in before you started the channel are recorded here for uh, easy access. For those of you that are particularly interested in doing data analysis on impedance spectra, we do offer an analysis software tool that's bundled with our SquidStat user interface software. So there's, there's a button here for Zoner Analysis Lab. So we partner with a company called Zoner, based in Germany, that offers this software that can analyze EIS data with equivalent circuit models and it can analyze DC data too. And so um, this video really would become too complicated and long to necessarily go over how this software works, but I'll just give you a very brief sample to see how you can create your equivalent circuit models and type in different sorts of constants uh, to change the model and then you can fit real data that is imported from our SquidStat potential stats into this Zoner software and fit your model against the um, data that you've collected. And really the main thing to say about the more options menu is that we have put in here all the different less used but still very important capabilities uh, for more advanced users or users that have more specific needs, for example, by changing the stability settings of different uh, channels that you are operating, uh, doing IR drop compensation, um, being able to access data that was lost uh, because we do have a special data recovery tool where you can actually save data that's being collected during an experiment, even if your computer loses connection to your SquidStat, whether or not it's because it was uh, disconnected or the, the computer crashed for some reason. And we also are continuously updating our software and uh, all updates are free in perpetuity. They're accessible by downloading our software from our website, AdmiralInstruments.com. So if you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, I encourage you to visit our website, admiralinstruments.com, for more information. And you can send us a message through our contact page or through our chat box. And um, look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you very much.